Hey, it's Sylvia from Write Your Life, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how I get all of my inserts into my TN, and I'm also going to talk about some freebies. <laughs> Okay, we will do the freebies last. So moving everything over, um, I had a question about how I fit multiple inserts into a TN, especially when I seem to have more inserts than I do strings. So I thought I would show you that quickly today. And I also wanted to show you what inserts that I purchase um, that are not pre-printed. So when we say inserts, in case you're new uh, to Traveler's Notebooks, what we mean are notebooks. We just call them inserts because we insert them in. So this is a life notebook. I usually get these from uh, Jet Pens, and I believe that you can get them from Tokyo Pen Shop. These are B6 size. They have grid or lined as an option, and they also come in, this one is pistachio, they come in vermilion as well. The second option that I like are these Moleskine notebooks. So these come in packs of three. They come in blank, lined, grid, as well as I believe dot grid. They also come with different covers on the outside, um, colored covers. So you can pick which one you like the most. I tend to go with uh, craft because it's my favorite. I like to collage the outside and so craft tends to match with everything that I have but you can get them in black red purple etc the Moleskine notebooks that I purchase are called Kair or large so they're not actually b6 size as you can see here they are about exactly an inch too tall but the width is pretty pretty spot on so I tend to cut these down I just use like a box cutter or any kind of cutter that you have to cut them. And then what I do is, this is one right here that I've cut down. I take a piece of packing tape and I um, secure the stitching at the bottom here. I've never had one unravel, but it is important to know that these are sewn and I like them because they lay flat. So I find that if you put just a tiny piece of packing tape at the bottom, it helps to keep it from unraveling. Now, I've never not put some tape there, so I don't know if you just left it, if it would be fine or not. Maybe it would. I don't know. I'm not sure. So I just, I don't care to take the risk. So a little piece of packing tape, and I've had this in here for like a month now. I've definitely had um, one of these in there that I've used for several months before. Never had an issue with them unraveling at all. Now the other insert that I really like is the digital insert, which I order from Etsy. And I am right now using uh, paper in cats from Etsy. So my issue with digital downloads is this. Um, they're not exactly gonna match what B6 size is um, when you buy them already pre-made like this in a notebook. They tend to be a little bit smaller, so you can see little notches here on the edge. That's where I'm supposed to cut them down, but I tend to measure them against like my notebooks and I will like <laughs> put a pencil mark around it and that's where I cut it. I ignore these lines. So you'll definitely see that the little, the little marks will still be there, but I like for them to match the size of notebook. This is especially important if you're going to put an insert, a digital insert like this inside of another insert like this. I like for them to match up. You can see that this is too wide and that's because I've cut it to fit inside the larger moleskine because they're a little bit wider. So like this one, for instance, here's another moleskine. Um, finding the center, I put this one in there and it fits pretty nicely in there. Okay, so let's count <laughs> how many inserts I actually have. I'm gonna remove these ones I was just showing you. Um, okay. So I have one, two, three, four um, paper and cats inserts here. This one I've actually put a cover on. These ones I didn't want to do that. I wanted to just put them inside of other inserts. So I have four digital inserts that I've printed out, cut, and stapled myself. Normally I don't even staple these because uh, the elastic will hold them so you don't need to staple them if you don't want to, but I did since I was going to be showing you how this works and I didn't want pages to be flying around. So this is the stapler that I use. I ended up getting this on 
uh, Amazon. I think it was around 30-ish dollars. It's a great investment. I still have my high school stapler. Um, I've never had to buy another one, so I feel like this will last me for a very, very long time to come. And the way it works is you just take your insert and you find the center and you lay it in here like this and then you just press down. It's very easy, quick. I love it. And I'll try to remember to link as much of this stuff down in the description below. Then I have a moleskin that I've cut down. This one is lined. A moleskin I've cut down that is grid. I have one of those life notebooks that's grid. And then I have this one, which is just like a random, you know, one that I ended up finding. Uh, I, I don't know what the brand name is. I don't even know if it has one. It's just really cheap lined paper. So that is four of the already bound notebooks and then four of the digital. And I have this, which is, I, I switched it out. I used to have a black one, but I didn't care for the way that this was like really contrasting with, you know, the brown. So I went with a brown one. This one was from Taroko Designs. They do have one in more of a craft color. These are the wipeable ones. So I, I don't know, I've never had to wipe them. So I don't know if that really works or not, but that's what they say it does. This one is a, um, what's it called? Sorry if I'm breathing heavy, I'm still sick. <laughs> uh, this is a Traveler's Company uh, file folder. And I just cut it down to B6 size. And actually this is a little bit shorter than this one. So this one's taller and more narrow. This one is wider and shorter. And the reason why it is shorter um, has to do with, again, the fact that there's no like universal size for B6 Slim or B6. Uh, Americans tend to have their own version. Sometimes sellers will just cut it however they think B6 should be. So uh, I was using a B6 Slim insert by MD and they are a little bit shorter than uh, other B6 sized notebooks. So I just cut it to fit that um, MD notebook. So that's why mine's a little bit shorter, but you can cut it to whatever size you want. So this was a standard size cut down to B6 slim to fit an MD notebook in it. So it kind of looks like this. It's going to be not as narrow, but I just wanted a folder to keep some things in here. And again, I just have those little like ephemeras that I keep in here and a ruler. Okay, and sometimes I keep this in here as well. Let's just keep some, let's just keep some sticky notes and some paper clips. And this is just a journaling card that I laminated so that it wouldn't like pinch the page when you put the paper clips on. Okay, so that is everything that I'm going to be putting in here. And then I have a couple of these. I don't know how many I'll need, if I'll need one or two. But these are just elastics. You can buy them anywhere. You can buy this white one at Walmart. If you go to the sewing section, they'll have it. And it's just really um, elastic string. You just tie a knot and you can tie it for um, the length of whatever notebook you're using. And this is just a colored one. So I have two of these to help piggyback in here, which I will show you. So the TM that I'm using is a Foxy Fix number five, and that's just the size that they use, but it's also a B6 size. It has a reinforced spine, meaning that it has an extra piece of leather here on the spine, and that helps so that this like doesn't bow in when um, you put a lot of weight on the strings, so I appreciate that. This is a Santa Fe leather, and it has um, four strings, which is called a compact. So my first notebook I'm going to put in here is my reading journal. Just find the center and you put it on the string. You just put it underneath and it's in there. It's not going anywhere. That's how that works. The second, my second insert is my vocab insert. So I find the center and I think I'm going to go ahead and put one of my digital inserts inside of here. So think of my notebook, this, this insert as a dashboard so if you've if you've seen if you've seen other videos they have those vinyl dashboards that are clear i don't have any right now i have ordered some from foxy fix so when that comes in i might do this over again to show you how i do that but if i had one of those clear ones let me see if i can find one in standard size so here is a clear dashboard in standard size normally what i would do is i would take two of these digital inserts and I would piggyback them together 
Let me show you what piggybacking is. You take an elastic, you find the center of each of these. And again, I went ahead and I stapled these. Find the center. If you put a, um, if you find a nice cardstock and you put it on the outside, this won't bend like that. But again, I didn't want to do that because I wanted to put them inside of my inserts. And I would take this one like this. And that's called piggybacking, just like that. And then I put them inside of this, and this would be kind of like the um, the hard cardstock sort of that would protect them. Of course, this is not B6 size, but then you would just take it like this in the center, and you'd put the string in between it like this. Of course, it's not going to fit in here because it's too tall, but you put it in the center like this, and that's how you would keep it in there. So once I get those, I will definitely have to do another video to show you how I put everything in here. So to recap, because I don't have any of those dashboards in B6 size, I decided to use each notebook as a dashboard by putting one of these inside the center of it. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so this is my second insert. It'll go on a second string, but I want to put one of these guys in here. So I'm going to put this daily one in here. And this daily insert by Paper and Cats looks like this. And I'm using it more like for um, projects or for the getting things done method. So you can write down here planner and then you could put all of the videos you want to do for planners. You could do one, two, three big videos. You could pick some notes for that project. Same thing over here. If I did a writing project, I would write down what it's called here. Put some like lists, put a list here for that uh, writing project and then put three big ideas and then some notes there as well. So I really like this. I'm not using it like a daily. I'm using it for more of a list notebook. Now, when you staple these, I like to cover the staples with a little bit of washi tape because your staples will rub against um, these elastics and they start to fray after a while. So um, it's just a nice thing to do so that it won't rub on there. So you find the center, you got two inserts inside of one, right? And then you just put it onto your string and it's in there, it's not going anywhere. And that's insert two. So right now we have one insert, two inserts on one string. All right, so now I have my third insert and my fourth insert. And these two, I'm gonna piggyback together and put them on string number three. So I'm gonna find my elastic and I'm gonna find the center of both of these. Now before I had an insert in here and the way I did that was I just took this one, it's already stapled. This is the weekly. This one is my um, calendar and tracker. It's the 2020 monthly planner. So this one's a little bit confusing, I'm sure. What I did was I took the um, month on two pages and it has grid in between each month. And I combined it with another insert by Paper and Cats. It's the tracker one. And that's because I saw Carrie Harling do it and I thought, oh, that looks really cool. So what you do is you print this insert out completely. And then everywhere you see grid, you layer this other insert in between. And then you will get a month on two pages, grid, half of that tracker, the other half of the tracker, and then grid. And then it goes on like that. So the center of this insert I had another insert. I think I might have had this weekly planner in here. Looks like this, again, from Paper and Cats. And then I just, you know, would get a string and I would put it in there. I actually didn't do that this time. This time I decided to go ahead and put it in the center of the planner insert, which is that large moleskin that's cut down by an inch. But of course, I have the tape on the edge right there, as well as right here. So I have this. And I'm going to piggyback it against this one here, which is my calendar and tracker. So here I have my elastic and I'm going to find the center. Again, I have washi tape so the staples don't rub up against this. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on. I like to put the little knot at the bottom so it's not inside my insert. And then I'm just going to take it like this and find the center of this one. Remember it has this one inside and I slide it through like this and they are piggybacked together. Then I find my third elastic, I'm gonna slide this in and it's gonna rest in the center, just like that. 
And there it is, not going anywhere. Okay, so now we get to the last part. I have this insert and this is actually a new digital one that I printed and I'm gonna explain why in a minute, why I decided to add this. I just added it yesterday, so you haven't seen it yet. But this is, you know, um, sort of by Paper and Cats. I, I, you know, I'll explain in a minute. I'm gonna put it in the center of here. So normally what I do is, if I want it to fit in the center of a notebook, I will take the notebook when this is all one whole piece before I've cut it, and I will just kind of like measure it like this, and I will take a pencil and I'll just you draw a line all the way around it like that, so that I know it will fit in here nicely. So I find the center, again, I'm covering the staples with washi tape, and you see how it fits in there nicely. It doesn't stick out, it's not too tall or anything like that. So we're gonna take this, find the center, put it around the elastic like this, okay? Now I have this and I wanna add it in here. So the first thing I do is, this is from the Jibun Techo Mini. So this is B6 slim size. It has a flap. So it's not like the traditional traveler's notebook um, zippy pouch that wraps around an insert. I just put the flap inside here, inside my cool folder, and then it'll stay just fine like that. Now, if you're someone who's gonna get confused by this, I'll go ahead and take it out. Um, Cause I know some people, this is so new, I understand. Anyway, so I'm gonna treat this like it's an insert, like it's a, a notebook, right? And I'm gonna put this in the center. Okay, and I'm gonna find the center of this. I'm gonna find my string. I'm gonna put it underneath and then that's in there and it's not going anywhere. Okay. Now, the last things that I'm gonna put in here are my dashboard. So the first thing I wanted to show you is, um, this is acetate, and acetate is very stiff. It doesn't like to move. So in order to make it a little more flexible, and this is something that I've, you know, I learned from Carrie Harling years ago, she goes ahead and she cuts it in half and she adds packing tape. So it's the same tape like this in the center so that it bends a little nicer. So that's what I've done here and I've measured it nicely so it'll wrap around the insert I wanted it to be around. So that is this insert here. Um, normally I would have already put it on here but just to show you, you can go ahead and put it on after it's in there. You just pick it up so you have space here like that and you're just gonna slide it underneath and wrap it around your insert. Pull this one back under. And then it's in there. And the last thing I add in here is this stuff that I like to keep um, right here because I don't have pockets in this TN. So I use Ollie Clips. They're by Ollie Block on Etsy. I'll try to link them down below. The other day I was looking for them and I couldn't find them. So anyway, these are magnetic clips that are very, very nice because they can hold through leather, which is like amazing, right? I think they're a little expensive, but I mean, they don't have any real competition, so I guess they can charge whatever they want. So I don't always recommend them because the pricing is stupid, but whatever. They work well and they last forever. They have two different sizes. This is called the small, and I have some here. These are the large in comparison. So the large can hold even more than this guy can but the small will definitely hold through leather. So I just have some things here that I wanna to refer to um, clipped on. And then this guy I usually have around my daily insert to keep it closed. Like that. And that is how I get everything in here. Off to the side. It's kind of chunky, but it's not as heavy. Um, as it probably looks. I mean, I'm perfectly fine with carrying it around. And you can see that the leather pinches together, which means that there's still <laughs> a lot more space. Um, you could definitely fit more in here if you wanted to. I think if you had pockets in here, that would make up the difference and then it would be perfect, but I don't because pockets are very, you know, they add a lot of bulk. Okay, so let's talk about this last insert in here. So this last insert is by uh, so this last insert says paper and cats. 
this is a digital download. Now, the reason why I like Paper and Cats and the reason why you might like Paper and Cats, especially if you're new to the Traveler's Notebook world, is that you can buy the digital downloads, but if you're not going to get it together to print them and cut them, you can go ahead and order them directly from, I believe her name's Taylor. So any design that you like, you can order and she'll send them to you so you don't have to print them yourself, which is awesome. Now, since we are dealing with coronavirus, I would check on the website. I will put a link down below um, before you order because you know, I don't know. I don't know if she's still making and sending them right now or not. I like to print my inserts on Tomoe River paper. There are uh, two different colors. This is the white. They also have... Um, I'm doing it this way so the glare is not like <laughs> in the camera. Um, they also have cream, so make sure that you're aware. It comes in a couple different sizes. I use A4, and I use the 68 GSM. So that is not the bible thin one. This one's a little bit thicker. Be aware that when you go with a thicker paper, they're only going to give you 50 sheets. Um, with a thinner one, you get 100. So 68 GSM, I'll try to leave a link down below. I always forget to link this. You can just find it on Amazon. That's the name. But what I love about it is because it's still thinner than regular paper, you can print a bunch and it's still fairly thin, which allows me to fit it inside an insert and not add a crazy amount of bulk. So this insert here, I kind of just made myself. It does say paper and cats. So I took um, this one, I believe. Um, I took this 2020 monthly planner and I erased this part right here and just left 2020. And then I wrote April um, with text. And that's where I got this from. Now the inside is just regular grid. I have a couple of blank pages and I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. But this is just regular grid. Now I'm sure that Taylor has a grid insert or a dot grid or a lined. Um, but I didn't want to purchase one since I already had this monthly insert. Um, in between the months, it prints grid. So I just went in and I found a page that had only grid, which was like page number two. And I just told my printer to only print that page. So I printed that like on 10 sheets. So I have around 40 pages, maybe a little bit more than 40 pages in here because I did print some, uh, because I did add some blank ones in here. And I wanted enough for an entire month because I found these freebies. Now these are freebies by three years apart. And I saw these on Ink Imperfections Instagram. I love her. I've been talking about her for years. She's awesome. I will link her down below. But Amanda from Ink Imperfections, she's been using these for a couple of months maybe longer. And every time I see them, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to try them. And I just keep forgetting. So these are a free download. And I will put the link down below to um, three years apart to her Instagram as well as her blog where you can get these from. You can print them in black or you can print them in color. So she has the uh, year at a glance. Then she has the days, um, and so every month she has a different color. This month for April, it is yellow. Now this, um, actually, these are in color, <laughs> but if you remember, I've been cheap, and I didn't want to buy any colored ink because it's expensive, <laughs> so I've just been printing everything in black and white, and even though I did buy colored ink, I forgot to change the settings on my printer, so it printed this in black, so these actually are not in black. Um, they have color, but they're beautiful. I love them. I hope that this is in frame. Let me move them in case they're not. And I really like the yellow, the pop of yellow. And this was just a coincidence. Remember, I had these stickers um, from Amazon that I bought. It happened to be yellow. So I was already going to do April and yellow. So that's kind of awesome that it worked out that way. So these are for the daily stickers. This was one I accidentally printed in black and white, so you can see that anything that was in color came out in gray. But I can still use these in um, different planners and in journals that I have. Okay, over here we have these kind of like monthly bullet journal style where you can cut this out instead of having to draw it, which is awesome. And they come in the yellow and in the black. Then over here you have like the bullet journal style, and then you have a key. 
and then they have some writing down here that you can cut out as well. Now right here, there was something else. Here where there's this blank spot, they had another one of these, but it was a Sunday start. I'm a Monday start kind of a girl, so I, um, I put a white square on the top of this so it wouldn't print that out because I don't want that. So I just have a blank space here. Now, when I cut this out, I save this space here and I stamp on it so it doesn't go to waste. But no, if you're one of those people who's a Sunday start person, they definitely have those and you could just cover this side if you didn't want to print out the Monday start because it would be a waste for me. Then there are some habit trackers, which are kind of nifty. So this one is a habit tracker, fitness tracker, and sleeping log. Now, I don't normally do these two. Like, I would fit this on here. I've never done a sleeping log because whenever I can sleep, I'm just happy. <laughs> I have anxiety disorder and that's just kind of part of... Part of my issue is that I don't sleep well. So, um, you know, I just thought it would be cool to try them out. Why not? And since I don't have to draw them out, why the hell not, right? So I have them here and again, in a couple of different colors. And of course, if you don't want to print out the colored ones or you don't want to print out the black ones, you can print one or the other. But just to show you guys, I thought I would print out both. Now on this page, I wrote this down so I would not forget. Right here, there was a big circle called level 10. And I guess that's like some other way to track moods or something. I don't know what it does. I've never done level 10. It's not important to me. So again, I put a big white square on here so it wouldn't print it out because I don't use that. But just know that they do have that if that's something you're interested in. Um, and then I just printed out the mood tracker part because I figured if I didn't want to do that, I could put a challenge for 30 days since there are 30 days in April instead. So I thought I would try it out. Now this obviously looks much too wide to put it this way in a B6, but I think it's gonna be okay that I could put it long ways this way. Does that make sense? I hope so. <laughs> and then the last one is only in black and white, which are these cute little trackers. Are they not adorable? And I love that they already start on the Wednesday. Now, of course, these are a Sunday start. If you're only tracking things and you just wanna color them in, I don't think as far as I'm concerned as a Monday start kind of a girl, I don't think it matters that it starts on Sunday, but you know, you do you. Um, yeah, but I think this is really snazzy. You could definitely track different things. So again, if you didn't want to, you didn't have to print out everything. Like if you already have this, don't print it out, you know? Um, if you don't want to do this, maybe you only want to do this, just print out whatever you like and they're free, which is sort of amazing. And I'll also put her, um, I think she has an Etsy shop where she sells things like this that are already pre-made. So if you're not going to get it together to print it out, you can certainly do that. Um, she has a lot of really cool stuff. So I definitely want to buy stuff from her Etsy shop for sure. I will also show you this. Um, this is the type of sticker paper that I use, not because it's amazing or anything like that. It's perfectly fine. But my boyfriend ended up getting this for an honest review like years ago. And you can see that I've, I've used a ton. There used to be a hundred sheets in here, but I still have a lot left. So um, I think he just got this on Amazon. I'll try to find this one, but I mean, you can use any sticker paper you want. So it is white on one side and on the other side is slightly cream. Um, you almost can't tell in bad lighting, <laughs> so you have to be careful. So my printer, this goes in like this. This is the backing that peels off and then it comes out in my printer like this, so it prints on this side. So I have gone ahead and just printed all of this on sticker paper, so all I have to do is cut this out and use it whenever I need to. Um, if you wanted to print it on regular paper, then I would recommend using a glue stick or, you know, uh, so type of tape runner, but I'm lazy. I don't want to do that. So sticker paper is amazing So the reason why and this is the reason why because I'm trying to use what I have and I have this white stark white sticker paper <laughs> I chose to go ahead and make this insert um, Because I thought it would match a little better. You can see that this is still slightly cream. It's not exactly white It's definitely not cream cream because cream is like vanilla like French vanilla cream, okay? But I think it'll match better on here than it would on the moleskin paper, which is, you know, a lot more cream, you can see here. I think that this would stand out a little bit more. So I thought I would go ahead and journal for the entire month of April in here. I normally keep 
a different journal because, you know, I carry this around with me everywhere. But since we are all staying home for another month, I thought, well, it's okay to carry my journal in here because it's not going to leave the house, right? So, um, yeah, so that's why I decided to go ahead and have this insert in here so I could have my journal. Um, I have about 40-ish pages in here so if I need to journal on two pages I can for the most part I really don't it's just about me you know kind of putting a few highlights of my day in here unless I have a dream or a nightmare that might take a little bit more space but not really so I think that'll be okay now the reason why I put some blank pages in here is because I thought these would look a little better on the blank page than it would on the grid um and again, I'm not going to be really planning on here, but since I already have these, <laughs> I thought I would go ahead and try them out in here on this blank paper. Again, you can see here that this is going to cut it pretty close. Um, you might want to shrink these down depending on what size of uh, bullet journal or TN you're using. If you're using an A5, these might fit perfectly fine in here. I might actually put this into my A5 memory keeping uh, notebook because I haven't set that up yet. You've seen that before. I don't have it near me, but you guys have seen that before. So I might put it in there because then I won't have to worry about like putting it in the center kind of on this page. But we'll see how it goes. But this is kind of snazzy. Um, this looks like it'll fit in here fine. I don't know if it's spaced out nicely enough that it can fit in five millimeter grid, which I believe this is. I'll have to let you guys know on that. But definitely these will look really cute in here. And again, you can size this down if you think that these boxes are going to be too big for whatever TN or notebook you have. So I am going to go ahead and put these into my TN as well as my A5 bullet journal. And I'm going to do a different video to show you what fit where, what I liked, what I used, and all of that jazz. All right. My name is Sylvia. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope that this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.